This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey, dudes. This is Lynn Griffin, Claire in the original Black Christmas, and you're listening to Tommy Throwback Kovac on Splat from the Past, guaranteed to offend and delight everyone out there. Hey, dudes. Welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s-themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today I've got a special treat for you because I will be talking to the gorgeous, the talented, blue-eyed Canadian beauty, Lisa Scrage. You all remember her as Mary Lou in Prom Night 2, Hello Mary Lou. She'll be my second guest from the movie after talking to the director, Bruce Pittman, a few years ago. Um, She was in a lot of great stuff back in the 80s. She did many episodes of Night Heat. She was in the reboot episodes of Alfred Hitchcock Presents and The Twilight Zone. She was in this great movie I watched the other night called Dreams Beyond Memory. Really sweet movie. Uh, You should all check it out on YouTube if you haven't. Also, Food of the Gods uh, 2. And um, she's now into like mental health or something now. And um, I'm going to ask her about that. Also, too, uh, rest in peace, David Burney. He was a fantastic actor. He'll, but he'll always be the dad in Oh God, Book 2. Um, that's a sad loss to acting. Also, uh, rest in peace, Rick Parnell, who played the drummer Mick Shrimpton in This Is Spinal Tap. I was thinking about reaching out to him recently for an interview, but sadly, it will never be. So, uh, yeah, here is my interview with Lisa Scrage. Hey, Lisa. Hi, Tommy. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Can you hear me pretty good? Yeah, can you hear me well? I can hear you. Good. This is uh, such a great honor. Thank you for taking the time today. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Appreciate that. My pleasure. So, going back in time, what age did you start gravitating toward acting? Oh, since forever. Like, I started professionally working when I was about 12. Mm -hmm. I took myself to auditions. I got on the subway. And as soon as I could start, um, yeah, I did it on my own. Like, I got myself an agent, and I I just roamed around the city to auditions and ate about everything you could eat on TV and a a (laughs) ton of commercials. And end of the day, that was um, late 70s and into the early 80s. There wasn't much more in the city where I lived then commercials, and then about the mid-80s, there started to be more production outside outside the CBC, more production, and, you know, just about when that movie started, started the, in the Mary Lou movie, that was, like, really the beginning of the the evolution of the film industry in, in Toronto, at least. Yeah, and in Canada, right? So, yeah. indepe- little independent movies, like, you know, like this movie... Small movies started to come around, and that's why uh, and started getting on a roll. It was a good time actually, the the mid to late eighties. So yeah, that's what that's how I started anyway. And that was my first my first like uh, film role was in the Hello Mary Lou prom night. It was called Prom Night Two, yeah. but it um, it had nothing to do with Prom Night One, as you probably right. well know. Right. It's just the same company owned the rights. So they and it was actually called um, The Haunting of Hamilton High. When I auditioned for it, it was called Haunting of Hamilton High. And it was called that throughout the production. And then only, I don't know when, but at some point they renamed it to market it, right? So attach it to the previous film with Jamie Lee Curtis, which I actually have never seen. But maybe there's some, I don't know if there's any relationship, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's my background wow. in terms of starting. That's a whole different world now. 12 years old, get on a train by yourself. <laughs> yeah, get on the subway. You know, I was thinking about that because, um, you know, sometimes people start really young in this business, but it's more their parents' thing mm-hmm. than theirs or their parents. Um, I'm not going to use the word pimp, but I just did them <laughs> to, you know, um, right? It's, if, if somebody wants to start, it should really be their initiative. So, you know, that's about as early as you could start. Um, I guess 12 or so get on and be you take it on yourself if that's something you really 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 are passionate about doing um, anyway 
That's just my opinion on it. Um, and that was back at, when it was maybe okay to get on the subway by yourself. I don't know anymore. But, yeah, it was good. <laughs> it was good. And, you know, you had managed, I managed my own finances, had a checkbook, all of those things at, like, 12, 13 years old. Bought a house when I was in my early 20s, you know, things like that. It was a good – it was – Better than having like a you know a job at a grocery store, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, a, that's amazing. Yeah. What what yeah. Did, what did you um, endorse in commercials? Oh, good question. Um, everything. Oh, Trident gum, uh, milk, a million things. And it, back in the time, if anybody's familiar with the uh, Toronto in the eighties, were some fantastic production companies making. All these commercials. There was the Partners, which was a huge production company, mm -hmm. and they were making all kinds of really cool commercials. And um, yeah, so I think I, like I said, I think I ate about everything you could eat and uh, <laughs> do all of that. I mean, sometimes I dig up an old commercial somewhere; it shows up somewhere. I don't know where, but oh, yeah. you know, um, that that's still around. I don't know how they, fi I don't know how they find them. Some of them are on YouTube, or if somebody sends it to me, an old commercial with me. They're pretty fuzzy. Um, you got to know that this is like. This is back before video, okay? Right. This is before video, right? <laughs> yeah. People, right? Then video came along in the late 80s. Anyway, it's just like way back before phones, before computers. People, you know, did commercials. And it was a big, uh, a lot of actors. I met a lot of actors in Toronto. We were all like going out for commercials, and that was our bread and butter. That's how we survived through right. commercials. It's different now because the internet and that, and then. Um, non-union commercials are, are more of a thing now. This is all union, well-paid, and people could live off the residuals, right? You could live. Yeah. He did enough commercials, right? Yeah. It's always nice. When the mailman showed up, you were like, oh, what's in the mail? Right? A residual check, you know? So you'd love the mail. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, I didn't even realize that uh, commercials were non-union now. Wow, that's something uh, I learned new. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my understanding. They're on non-union, and there's not like so much TV, right? Commercials yeah. are on YouTube now, right? So, uh, oh, yeah. Different, different, but a different world. So that's where I started from that world. And then, like I said, then mm -hmm. I got that audition for this, this little movie, mm -hmm. for the uh, Prom Night 2 movie. You were, and I remember this so well, you were um, in uh, the, the Keanu Reeves Disney TV movie, Young Again. Oh my God, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I did that. Um, that was just before he was leaving for L.A. He was yeah. going to go, like, jump in his car after that and drive to L.A. And, uh, yeah, I just did a little part in that movie. I think it was those two brothers that directed, two brothers that were making, like, movies of the week. Movies of the week were really popular, too. So it was, I think that was like a movie of the week type of thing. Yeah. He goes up to you at the dance club and um, he, he asks you uh, what that song was. It was Madonna's Burning Up. And you like reject him. And then after, and then after he asks you to dance, you walk away. And then um, Laura Sherman from Killer Party asks him to dance. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Thanks for, for reminding me. I didn't really remember all that, but that's cool. Right. Yeah. I, that was, that might have been before I did Mary Lou. I'm not really sure. I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that was before or after. I did a bunch of small uh, films after Mary Lou, like uh, independent movies, right? Which, little independent movies. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I take but, it. I take it that uh, Prom Night Two was just uh, another standard audition for you. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, it was, and um, I kind of I, I had a very strong feeling about the 50s I like the 50s as that era mm -hmm. so I don't know I kind of got that like I felt it um remember I grew up when like Greece was popular and happy days and the 50s was pretty even though this was like the 80s we had a really strong sense of the 50s and style of the 50s and, and all of that so having like being a prom girl in the 50s all of that really resonated for me Mm -hmm. So I got that. I think I got it. I understood that pretty well and what that would look like. And I think they did a good job of recreating the 50s and the, the costumes were really good. The dress was great. All right. So the whole feeling of the 50s was, was great. I think they did a good job with that. Yeah. So that was my, yeah. So I, I think I kind of much, I don't know, you know, when you kind of feel something like it's right, you know, right. like it was a good fit for me at that time. It was a good fit. That, that part. Mm -hmm. What was the title of the script that you got? The Haunting of Hamilton High. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, that was the title. It was written by Ron Oliver, uh, this movie, The Haunting of Hamilton High, which is called Hello, Mary Lou, Parm Night 2. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, the movie has a little bit of um, Stephen King's carry undertones, which is which is quite bizarre too, given the fact that it's got uh, the Prom Night Two uh, name on it. Did you realize that at the time? No, but what I learned uh, after that was it has a little of a lot of movies in it, mm-hmm. and that was intentional. Like it's got a lot of different components, or uh, and that, that was very intentional. It's not like by fluke that he stole it. He, I think he, you know, and there's a lot of tongue in cheek in that movie too. There's a lot of, that's meant for the humor, and that's what I think makes it kind of different. That in in a in horror movie, it's kind of funny at the same time, quirky and funny, and, and yeah, and he takes bits and pieces from popular movies at the time. I I think he did that. Um, it was with intention. So yeah, I was the- yeah, no, but I, I've never seen a Stephen King. I don't like scary movies, to be honest with you. I don't yeah. like anything scary. So I've never seen seen a movie like that. I mean, a Stephen King movie. Yeah, what, what what was Michael Ironside like to work with? Um, he was okay. I, um, yeah, he was fine. He showed up, did his thing. He was, you know, we were all. He was like one of the few adults in the movie. We were all. You know, in her twenties, he was older than the rest of us. Yeah, yeah I remember him. We uh, we did a bit of a reshoot later, and I saw him again then. Yeah, he was okay. Yeah, he's a badass. The way he plays villains, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got that kind of. He's got that down the villain thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. How long did it take to pl- to apply the uh, d- demonic makeup on you? Oh, the scary stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it was quite a, a rigmarole, and they tested it on me and kind of got stuck to my face, so then they reworked that. Um, yeah, I don't remember how long it took, but I remember it being a thing. And then, then when she's burning up, that, that's not me, right? That's a stunt double. Like, oh, you can okay. see kind of when it switches over, right? It's, stunt, it's yeah. a stunt double, and it's a very good stunt. She did a wonderful job. I don't, I'm not sure of her name, um, but she did a great job, um, the stunt double. I watched the stunt. It was pretty scary. I mean, there was fire, real fire. It was really good, really excellent stunt. Everybody was great. Like, everybody who worked on it was really good. Bruce was fantastic. Yeah. Um, the crew was great. We shot in Edmonton. Everybody was great. I mean, like I said, we were all kind of coming from different places. It was a kind of a new thing to make these little movies. Um, I know, I don't know if you know uh, Justin. Uh, he's called Louie now. Uh, Louis Ferrer. He, he played the... Okay. The boy, the boy in it. He's yeah. had a really great career. Yeah. Yeah, he was kind of this on his first, you know, first mm-hmm. gigs. We were all on our first. It was all our first time for a lot of us. So it was a good, it was a good fresh start for all of us. Do you remember anything about Ray Sager? No, I don't. He's one of the producers. Yeah, I've interviewed him. Very strange, but genius man. I have to say. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. You did some um, episodes of uh, Night Heat. Did you enjoy that? Yes, that was a great show. It was a wonderful show. It was uh, a lot of heart. A great, fantastic crew. And uh, it's a very special show for me. It holds a lot of uh, space in my heart, that show. I love that. Yeah, I had a very wonderful times doing that show. I did several episodes of it and met a lot of great people. Some of them I still know very well. <clears throat> Very well. <laughs> Some of them I married. So, yeah, it was pretty good, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Stephen, Min- Stephen Mendel, I've talked to him. Great guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. You guest starred in the um, Alfred Hitchcock Presents reboot in the 80s with Michelle Phillips of the Mamas and Papas. What was that experience mm-hmm. like? She's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was great. She was a, a lovely woman. And that was a really fun episode. It was a good part and a good story. Mm-hmm. But kind of, you know, um, it, yeah, it was really, really good. I really enjoyed that one. And I liked working with her. Um, and Bill Fruitt directed that. It was great. Yeah, it was really good. I really, it's a long time ago, but, you know, <laughs> when you have good memories and when you have bad memories too, they, they stick with you. That yeah. was a good one. Yeah, yeah. William Fruitt is—he's so underrated. He's like the Canadian Wes Craven or Toby Hooper, but he doesn't get the credit oh, he yeah? deserves. I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. He's one of the oh, masters was, of horror. 
Oh, really? I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah. Uh, Duncan Rieger, he was in there too. Another eccentric. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he was in that. Yeah. yeah, Peter McNichol from David Cronenberg's Rabid. And a young Andrea Roth was in that episode. Mm, I don't remember her. Yeah. I don't know who she is. Oh, she's had a huge career since then, mostly in television. Mm. No, I don't know her. You also did the um, reboot of The Twilight Zone not long after. You got to work with Bud Court. Yes, I loved him because I love the movie Harold and Maude. Yeah. You know the movie Harold and Maude? Oh, yeah, it was shot in my hometown. Was it? Yep. Where's that? San Mateo. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I loved Ruth Gordon, and I loved him in that, and and it was so it was really um, an honor to get to work with him. He's a sweet man, and it was also a fun part. Um, uh, who directed that? Um, he just passed away. He was also great. I can look him up. <sighs> Uh, yeah, oh, no, we just having a Steve, forget. Stephen DeMarco. Steve, just Steve Mar yeah, Steve DeMarco. Do you know who he is? No, I don't, actually. He had a really great career. He, uh, unfortunately, you know, sadly, he just passed away about a year ago, or maybe mm. two, during the pandemic, I think. Um, yeah, he did a lot of episodic television, um, and he was great. Yeah, it was a good episode. Really good. Um, yeah, some good people in that, too, that one, too. Oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I see he directed a lot of um, Canadian shows like Goosebumps and mm -hmm. Ray Bradbury mm -hmm. Theater. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you um, got to have an on-screen romance with Mark Singer in Shades of Love. How oh, was God. That? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did, huh? Yeah. Well, I guess I did. But yeah. Well, that was nice. Got to go to Montreal. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. And shoot there. Yeah. Forgot about that one. Yeah. Is he That's good, interesting. Is he a good guy? I don't really know. Yeah. Seemed okay. It was fine. Um, what else did I do after that? Oh. You're bringing back all these old memories. <laughs> I saw the other night Dreams Beyond Memory. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, that was an independent movie. Yeah. Um, with a really good intention. It was tricky. Um, the execution was a bit tricky, but it was a, a good script. It was an interesting process. Could have been done better, but um, yeah, the story was good, and for me, it was a great opportunity to to play that role. So I lo I loved that. Anything that I could do, period, like that, went back into the '30s and '40s. I, I just yeah. like anything that's period. It's lovely. Yeah, that was nice. You had a great chemistry with that guy, George. Uh, how you pronounce his last name? <laughs> He couldn't stand me, but yeah, <laughs> I don't think he liked me very much, but that's nice that you say that. Oh, <laughs> George Tuliadis, he yeah. just was allergic to me or something, I don't know. But um, yeah, that's funny, we were just laughing about that the other day, why he was like that, I don't know. But Yeah. Well, yeah, well that's good. Maybe he was a little intimidated to have to kiss a 20-something year old. I don't know what his story was, but yeah. Yeah, well there's, a lot, of, of, there's yeah. a lot of people who you see on screen, they, they, they're so good together, but then you find out later they couldn't stand each other. So it's, it's yeah, I think it happens a lot. Yeah. I think you're right. It probably happens a lot, a lot more. But that's what they call acting, right? Yeah. <laughs> to make it seem like, <laughs> right? Yeah. It is a skill, right? So... Yeah, and that yeah. that particular kind of genre doesn't exist anymore. About the the older guy who falls in love with the woman who reminds him of his uh, late wife or something. That was pretty common yeah. in the eighties, but like no one makes those oh. anymore. Yeah. Uh huh. That's why I like. Maybe about. they're not. Yeah. Politically correct or something like that. I don't know. Maybe, but I'll tell That's you, the movie brought some tears to my eyes. I thought it was a cute movie. It was a sweet movie, you know. And that's why I meant the intention was really good. The, the, unfortunately, the man who directed it didn't have very much experience, so it was a little bit, uh, there was nobody really holding the reins in that one. It was a little loose, but anyway, the intention was good. It was I, I was really into it. I love the story. So, Were you a, in, under any pressure, though, because you were playing the other lead? Oh, in the, the two? No, no. No, it's just that it wasn't, it was the... Like I said, it just wasn't, um, uh, there wasn't a lot of direction. Mm -hmm. It was, a, it, right? You kind of were just on your own, kind of flailing on your own. How about that? You kind of was yeah. directing myself. <laughs> so I was doing my best. But uh, yeah, 
you know, that's what it is, right? It's an experience and a whole bunch of people get together and everybody brings what they got to the table and you try to make something out of it with whatever money you have. have. So it's tricky, right? Yeah. When you've been part of the process, you, you have a, a lot more forgiveness for movies that don't always work out, right? Right. No. How was um, making Food of the Gods 2? I don't remember. I tried to like black that out of my memory. Actually, I, tr- I think I tried to get fired from the get-go, but oh, he yeah. wouldn't fire me. So um, <laughs> I just tried to forget. Yeah, I begged, I think, please fire me. I uh, don't want to really be doing this, but yeah, I tried to forget. Yeah, did you see the, the original? No, no. Yeah, I personally I have, a, no. I have a little bit of a fear of rats myself, so. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to around you, yeah. No, that wasn't a good one. How about um, China White? Oh, that was interesting. Mm-hmm. So, um, I had just gone down to LA, mm-hmm. and um, and I got an agent, and then I got offered the script, and I I barely read it, and I took it because I got to go to Europe. So I went to Europe and shot that movie, and it was really interesting because it was a whole, entire Chinese crew. Mm-hmm. Um, Many of whom were had been working with uh, Jackie Chan, yeah. and uh, like stunts, and there was just a few people that were on board from. I guess I was considered kind of an American at that moment mm-hmm. um, from the U.S., but everybody else was Chinese, and uh, they paid cash, and uh, yeah, it was kind of fun. We got to go. We shot in Amsterdam. We shot in Brussels, and we shot in Paris. Like we shot in the Eiffel Tower. I don't know how they got all these fantastic locations, but amazing locations. And so it was a good gig. It was a really good gig. Yeah. That was a, yeah. Interesting. I never saw that one, so it's like a kung fu movie? No, it wasn't like a kung fu movie. It was a a cop story. Mm -hmm. And it was about, I guess, the underworld and the drug trade. Mm -hmm. Um, The the director had went on to do a lot of other projects. Uh, Ronnie Yu. If you yeah. look him up, you're Ronnie you. Oh, yeah. I think he, yeah. He's so, the, he, yeah, it was... Hmm? He's, the, um, he's the guy who made Freddy vs. Jason, another horror movie. Oh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was great. It was a good It was a good, good movie. And like I said, I got, I got to shooting Europe in some really lovely locations. And, um, yeah, it was really nice. A uh, and it was well done, too. Yeah, Billy Drago was in it too. He's a he's a good yeah. actor. Yeah, he's intense. Yeah, he was in it. Mm-hmm. I found out recently his son was the uh, the the young guy with the long hair on Northern Exposure. I did not know that. Oh really? Oh, I didn't know either. He was a nice man. I remember meeting him. He was nice. Okay. But he, he just came in for a couple of days. Yeah, guys mm-hmm. who are good at playing bad guys are usually really nice guys off stage. Yeah, they usually are, aren't they? They're usually the sweetest okay. people. The people that play bad guys, they just have sort of mean faces, but they're really, really, usually very gentle, sweet people. Yeah. You yeah. Did, you did an episode of uh, Tropical Heat that Sam Furstenberg directed. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> ah, I did that in Israel, right? I think so. Is that what it's called? Tropical Heat. Yeah, we were in Israel. Um, yeah. It, and I, I, hear I spent a few months there. Out and, he- uh, out yeah. Here. Yeah, Sorry. out here it's called Sweating Bullets. That's what called Sweating Bullets, yeah. yeah. I didn't know the other name. Sweating Bullets, yeah. I happened to be down there and um, spent a few months, actually, on that set. And then I did, I think I did an episode of that. Yeah. Yeah, Caroline Dunn was on there. She's been a bucket. Yeah, she's, so she, like, when I was telling you about the commercial days, mm-hmm. she and I were, like, the queen of commercials, like, together. We did, both did a ton of commercials back before we did other things, so we... I knew her quite well from the commercial circuit. Yeah. She, she did a lot of commercials, too. She was in this, this great little um, teen sex Canadian comedy called Breaking All the Rules. And, um, I hope uh, I get her on the show eventually. She's been the bucket ah. list for a long time. Oh, yeah. good. Oh, nice. I did talk to um, Barbara Tyson, who was in that episode. She's cool. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very nice. Mm-hmm. So, so at what point did you decide you were going to leave acting? Mm. After all of that, I think I had enough. And I think that was enough for me. 
And I, oh, I left and I came back a little bit later. I did a few things. You, you missed a few. So I, I mm-hmm. left around 1990. Yeah. And then I came back again around 1995 or 6 when my kids were in school. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I did a movie with the Hulk and Shannon Tweed and some, and oh, um, the guy from Rocky. He was nice. Carl Weathers. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did a movie with them. Um, yeah, and a few other things that I did, you did the set back in, then. And you did the Sentinel. Yeah, I did that show, The Sentinel. I did a few mm-hmm. things within a year. Like, I came back and then I did boom, boom, boom. I did a bunch of things within a year. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to quit again. And I left again. <laughs> so I was pretty sure the second time I really didn't want to do it anymore. It wasn't mm-hmm. for me. I just didn't want to do it. Just wasn't my thing. I love acting, but I don't really like the business or, yeah. you know, just the whole atmosphere. Just not my thing. So too many people yeah. for me. <laughs> do you think if you had had better experiences, maybe you would have stayed in the game? I don't know, Tommy. It, you know, I think you have to have pretty thick skin and to sustain it. Mm-hmm. I think the people you see that can sustain it, they have certain qualities that maybe they can kind of deflect and like move through i'm just too sensitive for it i take everything in and it's just uh, it kind of weighs me down so oh. like i think my my mental health is way more valuable than that so uh, it's just it didn't make me happy you know i love yeah. acting but the whole atmosphere of the business it's very challenging yeah. to think for a lot of people you know it's a hard business i think Kudos to anybody who sticks it out because it's so it's so hard. It's a really hard business. I'm sure every business is hard, but I, so, you know, yeah. you know. I loved doing stand up comedy. I just hated other comedians. They're such backstabbers. I, I, I oh get, totally. I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's yeah. Awful. It's hard to be around those people, right? It yeah. was hard to be around other actors. Like one well, of the hardest things is to be around other actors. Okay, yeah. it's just not easy. People are not kind or generous and. The more insecure they are, the less generous they are, and everybody's got their own agenda. Yeah. And, and very few people you co- you encounter that are. And maybe if I was a little older and I was a little more mature, I could have had this skill set. Yeah. You know, you really have to develop yourself and your boundaries right. to you know to, in place really clearly. And almost you know, if you get success a little later, that's actually better. Yeah. If you get mm-hmm. success early on. And you're not really prepared. You're not emotionally prepared for that. Mm-hmm. It can really backfire on you. And I think it happened to me so quickly. And, you know, that could also, you're not even grateful for it because it happens so fast. Right. Right? You just get boom, 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 you get work. And then you don't even realize how very fortunate you are. So all of those things, right, yeah. have to come together. Like, your stars have to align. And maybe waiting a little longer is right. actually a better and healthier thing to happen to a person so that you can actually mature and develop your own self and then all your protections and your support so that you can um, sustain the, a very difficult position, whether you're a stand-up comic or you're an actor, you're vulnerable, right? Right. So um, it's, 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 it's tough. I mean, if you, you know how many actors fall into even very successful ones, mm-hmm. right? Drug use and alcohol because it's so hard. Yeah. It's, it's so, so hard, right? So yeah. some of us just have to leave, right? Some of us just can't take it. And we just think, you know what? I don't care how much money this is. It's not worth it. So right. and if I, then you've got to figure yourself out all over again. Some of, in some other way, you figure yourself out. You pick yourself up and you figure something else out. It's a life, right? Right. You live a life. And, you're, you, you know, hopefully you grow and you learn along the way and you make mistakes. You just keep going. I know. I'm I'm grateful for this, you know, tiny this tiny little level of success with this podcast because I don't think I would have handled yeah. it ten or twelve years ago, you know. Yeah. A person. I get it, right? And you've earned it because it's something you're passionate about. So if mm-hmm. you're passionate about something, that's like the first place and then you take the steps and hopefully you have enough figured out in your life, right? To uh right. to balance everything. It's always about balance, right? Right. So do you do, do you work in mental health now? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I teach people uh, movement. Mm-hmm. I teach people moving from the inside out and so that they and, you, and breathing and all of those things. You can call it yoga, but I do a, mm-hmm. a lot more than yoga. But And then 
at the end of 90 minutes, you just feel so much better. And you're able to go out and, you know, be with the world in more of your authentic way, right? Yeah. More yourself. Find more of yourself. So, yeah, I teach movement, and you will improve your movement. I think you'll get better at movement, but you just feel so much better. So, yeah, so it's really about um, aging well, maintaining your health span, not just your lifespan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm really, really interested in health and and. And they're not separate, like your mental health, your physical health, yeah. your emotional health. They're all, it's all you, all you, <laughs> it's all you. So all components of your well-being, and that's what I'm interested in. And hopefully that makes a contribution to individual lives, you know, people feeling better in themselves, feel, people, yeah. you know. And then when you feel better, you can go and, and, and be better to other people. You don't have to be shitty to other people. <laughs> you can be nice and kind because you've got nothing to lose, Right, right. Yeah. You can be more generous. Yeah. I know. That's that's what I'm all about. I'm all about just being kind and generous to people. And I just, it, it hurts my heart to see people do the exact opposite of that. Yeah. Right on. Good for you. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. It's really great. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Good for you. So you, you pass it along, right? You just pass it along. Always. You pass the good, good stuff along. Somebody else. If you treat somebody shitty, they're going to treat the next person shitty. <laughs> right? Exactly. If you treat somebody, it doesn't mean you don't have to know them. With kindness, then they feel a little better. Say something nice to them. What do you got to lose, right? Yeah. You know, random acts of kindness, right? It doesn't hurt. It's not, it's not so, difficult either. No. Makes you feel way better, right? Yeah. It's those little tiny things, I think, that make a better world for everybody, right? We're all trying to, we're all trying to survive. It's not easy. I, right. I, totally agree with you Lisa and I want to thank you so much for coming on today and having this thank little you. chat with me yeah nice to connect with you thank you for inviting me Tommy absolutely. I really appreciate that absolutely Wish okay wishing you all the best take yes. good care of yourself I sure and your will. people you have a great day okay. and please stay safe you too you too okay. take care bye 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 well there you have it Lisa Scrage ain't she a sweetheart Oh, what a great lady, huh? Very passionate about mental health and people being aware of it. Uh, we need more people like her in this world. And don't forget, she was Mary Lou in Prom Night 2. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Liar, dudes!